Hi everyone, uh, our today's lesson is about uh, German Romanticism and Hoffman and uh, his novella Nutcracker and the Mouse King. So let's get started. I would like to inform you that it's about our 3rd and uh, 8th of April for our uh, two lectures for these dates and uh, we have three contents uh, according to our syllabi. The first one is German uh, Romanticism Ernst Toder Amadeus Hoffmann and his literary activities, The Nutcracker and The Mouse King. And the second content is major themes, time, fate and the loss of beauty, etc. in The Nutcracker and The Mouse King. And also analysis of motifs, characters, symbols in the nutcracker and the mouse king and the use of literary elements in this novel so um uh, we have um three headings for this uh video lesson the general introduction of uh german romanticism and major representatives of german romanticism and hoffman so, German Romanticism was the dominant intellectual movement of German-speaking countries uh, in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Uh, it was influencing philosophy, aesthetics, literature and criticism. And compared to English Romanticism, the German variety um, developed relatively early and in the opening years coincided with Weimar classicism. In contrast to the seriousness of English Romanticism, the German variety of Romanticism notably valued wit, humor and beauty. And um, so major representatives of this movement were Heinrich Heine, Friedrich Schlegel, Friedrich, uh, Friedrich Schleiermacher and uh, Wolfgang Goethe and Adam Müller and also Hoffmann. Uh, today we will talk about Hoffmann. Uh, so yes, it's recording. Sorry for stopping. So uh, Hoffmann, um, a German romantic uh, author of fantasy and gothic horror. So. Um, and he was a jurist, a composer, music critic and artist. And Hoffmann's stories highly influenced 19th century literature and he is one of the major authors of the Romantic movement. So, um, and uh, let's talk about uh, his uh, literary activity. So, the Alta Motto, the Golden Pot, uh, Mademoiselle de Scudery, the Nutcracker and the Mouse King, the Sandman, it's a short story, and Little Zahir's Great Dinner. Uh, so, here you can see his main uh, works, but we will talk about especially the Nutcracker and the Mouse King. Uh, the Nutcracker and the Mouse King, um, Hoffman's. Um, a well-known, uh, most famous uh, novella is the inspiration for what remains the most performed ballad in the world. So that inspiration is second-hand. However, for the story told in the Christmas time tradition, the Nutcracker ballad suit is not technically an adaptation of Hoffman's significantly different and darker, uh, darker original. So that original story was first published in the author's native German as part of multi-author collection titled uh, Children's Stories in 1816. Two years later, Hoffman um, uh, republished uh, the story as part of a broad-ranging collection of other works in uh, a volume titled The Ser Serapian Brethren. In uh, Hoffman's uh, construction, the familiar elements of uh, the Nutcracker and the toy soldiers uh, become the story within a story, which is really focused upon a young girl named Maria uh, trying to uh, convince her parents of the truth about what she saw one night uh, uh, when her anxiety over the state of an um, exquisite nutcracker which was broken. 
Her reports of a battle between toy soldiers and mice is viewed as a nightmare, and Maria's father uh, threatens to throw uh, away all uh, her toys unless she ceases giving in uh, to such immature fantasies. And uh, they have several major themes uh, in this novella, so loneliness, time, fate, the loss of beauty and imagination and the value of the story. Uh, the unspoken theme that gives uh, this novel a novella its uh, melancholic feel is that no one believes Mary imagination, Mary's imagination. And not only is uh, this tragic because Mary isn't taken seriously, but it's also a tragic uh, indication that the person taking care of Mary is not comfortable or familiar with the way a kid's uh, mind works. Mary doesn't need uh, Drossel Meyer to believe her, literally. Uh, she really just wants to talk about her emotions with someone, and telling, with, uh, telling uh, someone about her games is an attempt to be a, a little less lonely. When he thinks uh, she is just being silly, he rejects her further. And uh, these are all ways that Mary deals with loneliness, and perhaps uh, she is even mourning. Her imaginary stories are dark and violent, and often she dreams involve a community rallying to support each other in the face of trauma and pain, which would be very uh, dis serious uh, to Mary. Another uh, another themes are time, a fate, and the loss of beauty. Uh, Mary uh, Mary's young imagination becomes fixated early on with the passage of time and the inevitable uh, loss of beauty. She's trying to reconcile the fact that as time passes, people age and their faces change. People get sick and people even die, uh, like her parents. Perhaps after all, she's at her uh, godfather's estate. In a word, uh, she is concerned about the decay of the world uh, towards some tragic end. Two major plot moments highlight this theme. The occurs of uh, Pearl Pot, where she goes uh, from being beautiful to being hideous, and the death of the nutcrackers that started the war with the mice in the first place. Notice how uh, the toys are human inventions, uh, but the mice uh, are agents of nature. That uh, man versus nature uh, conflict, um, so this conflict is um, also relevant to this theme because you know that uh, we. Um, the same conflict is uh, that we discussed in the Gulliver's Travels too. Uh, or not with you, sorry, uh, we, tr we discussed it with other group. Okay. Uh, imagination and uh, the value of story. So, this story features the brilliant imagination of a young girl uh, during Christmas time, whose difficult life leaves her unable to sleep. At night, sometimes uh, she wanders around her godfather's estate, and she imagines an entire world. The novel depicts her imagination uh, as if it's really happening, but the reader should distrust uh, the narrator's point of view about that, uh, since her imagination seems real to her. And that's uh, one of the most important design features of the novel, uh, that her imagination seems real, because to her it's true. In a way, they are more true in a greater sense than if they had been literally true. When uh, she creates stories from her imagination, she learns from them uh, authentically. With uh, this domain of play, she can work uh, through the various pains and fears of her blossoming mind. So, uh, we uh, talked about uh, five uh, major themes of this uh, novella, and uh, let's, let's start to analyze this. Um, this story. The story of a young girl's difficult, painful enlightenment to some basic truths about life on uh, on Earth uh, and Mary's imaginary world and struggle with something specific. So, uh, this is um, 
the story of a young girl and uh, the reader could easily interpret this entire plot as an uh, existential crisis. In that case, uh, Drossel Mayer's gift of a clockwork uh, world would be a way of showing Mary that chaos is necessary in life or else everything is repetitive and boring like that toy quickly becomes. Uh, she much prefer um, um, the dark chaos of her imaginary uh, world uh, where uh, the stakes are life and death and where people take tragedy with communal support and where no one is alone. Mary is probably mourning the death of her parents uh, which is implied in that they live with Drossel Mayer, who is their godfather. This newfound awareness of tragedy and death makes Mary's imaginary world into a tool that she uses to ask difficult questions about life than uh, she can otherwise handle emotionally. Look uh, for a moment at just how violent this seven-year-old imagination is. She imagines a world of bitter warfare, warfare uh, between two um, antithetical forces. She imagines the pain of loss for the community each time someone dies. Interestingly, uh, she also imagines funeral rites and spells of mourning when bad things happen. And when the toy community loses someone, they all come together to support one another. So based on this, uh, the reader can uh, guess safely that Mary is struggling with something specific. She wants Drossel Mayer to be in community with her so that he can help her more directly with the pain of her life. And she needs help and support from someone. And these stories are like cries for help through which uh, she invites Drossel Mayer into her mind and emotions. Sadly, he misunderstands this and he has a hard time relating to her. So she stays fairly lonely in her godfather's estate. And uh, we have four symbols, uh, the mice, the nutcracker, purple as curse, and the clockwork world. The mice as a symbol uh, for decay, uh, we are discussing here. Mice in the estate indicates uh, the passage of time because older houses tend to become infested with mice. And mice are also animals, which means they represent nature because they are literally compelled by their nature. They are violent and they bring chaos and pain to the toy uh, community. In other uh, words, they make things worse over time, uh, which makes them into a force of decay. And the second, sim mm, the second symbol is um, the nutcracker. Um, one obvious symbol is, is the titular nutcracker imagines uh, imagined uh, sever. Uh, in the context of the war against the mice, the Nutcracker is a sever character because uh, he will save the toy people from their impending doom. This is especially significant given that these characters belong to a religious community and they are celebrating Christmas. In the context of Mary's imaginary world, the sever uh, character represents hope that in the future can bring something good in spite of Mary's fear of time. And purple at course, uh, in Mary's imagination she invents a beautiful princess. She imagines a beautiful girl, more beautiful than any other person in any universe. And this makes uh, Purpilot uh, um, archetypal because uh, she is the most beautiful girl in the world. So she represents the fullness of Mary's desire to be beautiful. So when Purpilot is cursed with a hideous face, Purpilot comes to present uh, Mary's fear of being ugly. And the last symbol is clockwork uh, world. Uh, when the children pester uh, their godfather enough, they finally figure out that uh, what it is that he made for them. And a little clockwork world uh, with uh, puppets uh, that come out in time, uh, like a cuckoo clock. Uh, they are fascinated by the world, but because the world is timed, it's uh, predictable to them. And before very long, 
the kids are bored of the clock and they want something exciting and unpredictable so Mary begins to invent an imaginary story about the toy world the clock world uh, represents the children's unlikely preference for unpredictability it's as if they understand that they are supposed to be entertaining themselves by the end of the book we know why they are using their imaginations to deal with painful emotions. And also, I, um, I chose some uh, quotations for you to analyze. Uh, let's look at the first quote. Oh, what an unhappy monarch I am. It's uh, telling by King. Uh, Lady Mauserings did uh, as she promised. She uh, avenged herself of the royal family by um, biting the beautiful little princess. Uh, I sent you the text. I hope that you have already known these texts and you've already been aware of these uh, original texts. That's what's written there. So if I tell you, oh, what, uh, what an unhappy monarch I am, I think you understand what I mean. And... Um, so, uh, Angelic Purplet turned into a hideous creature. The queen uh, shut herself away in the morning, and uh, the wall of the king's study had to be padded, uh, for he would often bang his head against them, and crying, oh, what an unhappy monarch I am. And he put all, uh, all the blame uh, on the court, a uh, clockmaker and a wizard, and issued him an order. And the king wanted to have his beautiful daughter back, uh, but he could not even imagine uh, the uh, outcome of uh, his treats. And the second, uh, take him away, take that horrible nutcracker away. It's uh, Telling by Purplot, and I would like you to explain it. You, you know that it's my method. I don't like to explain everything by myself, and I would like to involve you to this analysis. For the next time, for our seminar, please try to find the analysis of this theme, this uh, quotation from the text. And, um, oh, poor me, poor me, what am I to say? It's um, uh, it's the other quotation by Mary. So Mary had been so happy about the Nutcracker's victory that uh, she hurried up to tell her family about it and the wonderful places she visited during uh, the last night. And what she didn't expect uh, was that um, nobody believed her. They laughed at her and at that uh, silly story she invented. They only laughed harder when she tried to explain. So Marie went to her bedroom and retrieved seven crowns of the mouse uh, king. Unfortunately, mm, so, um, sorry. Sorry for pausing. Uh, it's twelve slide. Hmm. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, it wasn't enough uh, for they called her a little liar, uh, and then Mary started to cry with telling, "Oh, poor me, poor me! What am I to say?" And uh, the little girl said and cried uh, violently, so because no one uh, believed her. And uh, of course, if you find some uh, interesting quotes uh, in this novella, you can share with me. Uh, I'm open to all of your um, uh, opinions, so try to uh, read carefully and analyze the quotes and uh, all the novella. So, literary elements. I would like uh, you uh, to know about these elements because they are really important. I will use these literary elements facts in your quizzes, in your revision, and in if it would be in a test format, it, uh, I will use it 
for your exam too. So uh, according to the genre, it's a short story and the setting and context, uh, the events of the story take place on Christmas Eve in the beginning of the 19th century and the narrator, the story is written from the third person of view. It's told by an omniscient narrator. And the narrator's tone is calm, and it seems that he enjoys telling uh, this story immensely. Mood is mysterious, so tone is calm, and mood is mysterious. Mary and the Nutcracker are the protagonists, whilst Lady mm, Mouserings and her sons are the antagonists. So I'm, I'm repeating, Mary and the Nutcracker are the protagonists, uh, Lady Mouserings and her sons are the antagonists. And the major conflict is a uh, person um, and obstacles. Mary has to fight with her family's mistrust, whilst the Nutcracker has to deal with difficult, uh, the horrible spell and numerous enemies. So, this is the major conflict of this novella. So, um, thanks for watching and try to analyze what I. Uh, gave to you as a home task and I see you on our seminar I will um, create uh, the quiz for you according to our new lesson and uh, you all must have this uh, novella in a PDF format I hope that you learned and it would be interesting for you after uh, watching PPT and video lesson. So see you on our uh, seminar. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.